Professional Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiacos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiacos, I said, you are crazy good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Lala Malaka! Sagapu para poli. Inegavos panda olimas. <laughs> well, welcome back everyone to another episode of Gate 7 International, the podcast by the fans for the fans. I am joined. I'm Labros Irmos. I'm here. It is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2022. We have just watched Olympiakos pull off the massive win versus the my, mighty Ionikos. So we decided that the hosts who will host this podcast are the two people who saw the mighty Ionikos in person last time they played Olympiakos nearly four months ago. Martial, Olympiakos France, is with me. Welcome, Martial. Happy New Year. Happy How are New you? Year. For yes. you, for you, and for all the Olympiacos fans. Bon on, as we say in my mother <laughs> exactly. French language. Exactly. Yes. I, I I can't believe that it's we saw the first game against Ionicos. It seems yeah. like it's another another season. It feels like it was years ago. We were sitting, and we watched uh, <laughs> We Joe give an assist to Pep Biel on a hot summer evening. Uh, do you think it was against? Yeah, I think yeah. it was against Pasianina. No, I no, the check. assist with with Yoni Kors, I'm sure of it because we were wa- the place we were in the stands. Probably, anyway, yeah. you're wrong. You're a fraud. But anyway, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Things have changed. Um, I'm trying to think. It's been a long time since I've been here uh, talking to you all. It's been an eventful few months, weeks, hours in my life, you know. Um, So I haven't been on many podcasts. It's um, hopefully in the new year I can get back into the podcasting scene so we can talk about Olympia, of course. Um, So now we're we're in the new year. I guess we haven't had a podcast for three weeks, so we can talk about a little bit about what happened. So I don't even know where we were when when our last episode was, but I'll just go, Olympia, goes to that preseason in Spain, let's just talk it through. Marcelo makes it. He's fat, but it's okay. He's not morbidly fat. So he can he he made the plane trip to Spain. Everyone said, Oh, he's back, he's back. Olympiacos had a good training. And the team looked good. The first game, what was the first game again, Marcelo? They played at home versus I think it was at Romitos in the cup. At Romitos. And then there was the game. The second game when they went to Yanina and they dropped points after a very good first half. Yeah. Mm. But overall, Olympiacos looks better the second half of the season. I think we can say that. Um, we're starting to see there's a 23-man group now. We were, before the break, like 40 people deep, so that's good. And yeah. you can say there's beginning to see a sort of attacking-minded Olympiacos with certain players. And that team has really been a built around Cosas Fortunis, Pep Biel, James Rodriguez, a midfield of Imbam Huang, Jan Envia, and then a back line. The back line is where it gets a bit problematic. You have Pascal Lekis in goal, but you have Doi. And now Socrates has made his way as the second center back spot. We started off at right back with, with Mario Surusai, who took an injury, I think it was in the first game. We went with Andruzos. He got embarrassed in Yanina. He's, I, I don't know where he is now. I think he got shouldered to Croatia or across the border to Italy or whatever. Um, and who did we have another right back? No. And now we're on to Rodney. So Rodney, the Brazilian from Flamengo, via his agent, who is Rafinha. Rafinha, we all know very well from the Brazilian beach, the short shorts. He's our new right back. He seems decent, played pretty well tonight, I want to say. Attacking, going forward, can't judge much. Of course, Yonikos' tragic team with really just shambolic, I don't know, organization, no striker, 
what can yeah. you really say of them? Not much. But it seems like you look around the league, Olympiacos is starting to pick up steam. I remember after the game with Panathinaikos, I told you all in this podcast, I think Olympiacos is going to win the title. Martial told me in private, you're insane. He doesn't think it's possible. But now we're looking down. I don't know, after Panathinaikos dropped the first two games of the rebound and Ike loses today, Olympiacos is looking closer and closer to the top two places. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, you, you, you're totally right. I, I still don't really believe we can win the title, but yeah, I do believe that we can stop the playoff with probably around like four to six points behind the first place because I don't see Panathinaikos dropping uh, more like 15 points before playoffs. They would, they would, they will surely drop points because. Uh, even today, they weren't that good in Livadia, but they will drop points, especially if we win the derby at Karaiskakis. Uh, and we, we, we will win back points, but hope we will play probably in the playoff. But yeah, until- no, I, I think that's a good point, Martial. Um, Olympiacos in the second half of the season has a super easy schedule. Like, let me go through it for you all. Yeah, like- yeah because I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. Yeah, it's, we have it's very easy. away. Uh, we have Aris at home. Those two games might be the most difficult. And then we have Atramitos away. We have Ofi, Ofi at, at home. home. Those four games we have to win then because uh, at the same time, uh, we go. Park plays That's... against Aris tomorrow and Palace Nikos play plays against Ajax. So drop points will be dropped by at least one of those teams. So let's hear. Yeah. Um, and yeah, did I say it's, it's January 3rd, 2022? Jesus yeah, you, Christ. You, you I'm, say I'm, that. I'm in shocking form. Oh, my days. Okay. It's 2023. God bless us all. It's not 2022 anymore. Disaster of a, a year for already bad course and all intents and purposes is gone. Um, yeah. Only bad course has to pick up points. I think that's the most important thing. They need to beat Volos, they need to beat Aris, they need to beat Atharomitos, they need to beat Ofi, and they need to keep building form because the game away with Pauk is so big. You know, they, we're starting to build up form, we're starting to build confidence, but Olympiacos has proven that they cannot beat any serious team. They can't, they can't defend against a serious team and hold the lead. Like, it, the yeah. game with Yanina was almost like, oh my God, here we go again, up 2 0 in Yanina, holding on to the game, and you drop points. It's, it's shambolic. That's something that a championship team wouldn't do. And it's going to cost the team deeply going deeper in the season when you drop points to Yanina away. But imagine, um, yeah, I, I, keep on. Uh, I was thinking that, uh, I think it was days ago, but the, the draw against Volos and the one. In Tripoli, those two games, like it could be four more, four easy more, more points yeah. in the table, and it would be very different because I don't think we are that far from Panathinaikos in terms of uh, performances on the pitch. Of course, they played better at the beginning of the season, but we are not that far. It, it should be like four, five, six points. Uh, and it seems like Bonathin Icos is starting to feel the pressure or crumble. Or, uh, I think I was listening to, was it Demis? Demis was on Nova Sports. Is he the one who's on Nova Sports? Anyway, he was talking about how, how fragile Bonathin Icos is because of the lack of depth coming off the bench. And now with already Aitor injured, um, it's like, who's going to come off the bench for Panathina? Of course, I read they're signing some guy from Mexico who could be coming. Maybe that was I. I don't know. But I, I, I think I saw a lot of people saying, I'm not afraid of Panathina, like this comment from TF91. Welcome back, our friend. Good to see you in the new year. Um, I'm not afraid of Panathina, of course, but mostly Ike. And I've seen that from a lot of people saying, Ike is the real challenger. Ike is the team that's going to, going to give Olympiacos troubles into the new year and let's not forget Pauk too because let's yeah let's not forget Pauk who's right next to Olympiacos as well 
it's not a, t- a team that we are used to beat uh, uh, that much because uh, we all know that Holo Shesku's prepares his team like, and I'm, they aren't aren't in the in a in a very good season this season, but they always there like they don't drop that much points. Uh, they are finding uh, form in uh, them too. And, and Martial, let's be real with this Olympiacos team. Why are we even talking? I'm afraid of Panathinaikos. I'm afraid of Ike. Olympiacos hasn't won a derby all season. Yeah. We're going to go to the playoffs and we are we're going to win all the derbies. At the same time. Yeah, so what are we talking about here? Until Olympiacos <laughs> wins a derby, can consistently play and win a derby and hold a lead, Olympiacos, like looking at the championship and looking at points and who's scaring us, it means nothing because Olympiacos in of itself cannot win a derby this season. Yeah. So it we need to, to win start. a derby. We need to, yeah. first things first, we got to beat Aris. Yeah, I was going to say that because yeah. if you remember correctly, the loss in Aris was pretty, pretty much the beginning. It was not the beginning of the disaster, but it was uh, what created the disaster in the league because... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we have to beat them. And the game with Aris was another example of the rest. We went up one nil, and then we conceded two straight, and boom, boom, we're done. We lost uh, yeah. the story of the season. So until this team can show that they can beat a serious team and hold a lead, I don't know what we can talk about really. Um, I, I think with you, you, you said it earlier that uh, I think Pichel has found. Uh, 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 I don't know, a team, because if you take a look at the... He's found a group of 23, 24, what yeah, is I would say it's, it's much more like 15 players, maybe, because we all know the lineup. Uh, yeah. if, know that Rodinei is able to play. He's going to play as a right If back. Rodney is able to play, we can make a lineup right now. It's Pascal Lakic, Rodney, Doi, Socrates. Unfortunately, it's Oleg Rebchuk, who's Horrific. It's Jan and Via, it's Imbom Huang, and then it writes itself. It's Hamez, it's Biel, it's Fortunis, who's in amazing form. We'll talk about him a bit more. And it's the striker. It's uh, either Bakambu or El Arabi. Yeah. So I think even it's Bakambu. The, even the but... change, it, would, it will be Masuras, uh, Rodriguez, Samaseku, and Buhalakis or Buhalakis. Kasami, one of, the, yeah. one of those two, and the striker. And the striker. Exactly. It's almost a group of 15 or 16. Yeah, because so many players are, are cut and few of them are injured. So those are easy choices to make for, for Mitchell. And But you, you look at the team, and I think the one question I have, Oli Bacos is lucky that Costas Fortunis is playing so well. He's back. We, we can talk about that in a second. But is anyone serious believe you're going to go on the road to Agia Sofia or Tumba and play with Pep Biel, Cosas Fortunis, and James Rodriguez. Why not? I mean, are you, but like, who? I, I think they, it, they it, can't it, even walk back, let alone track back. James Rodriguez can't yeah. run, let alone, he's very good, but he, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? How, how are you going to play a compact defensive system? Are you going to go and go to Tumba and play expressive attacking football? That's a big I, I, risk, right? So I that's what I'm it, thinking about. Yeah. Now you're right, because in terms of tactics, I think uh, someone like Lucescu or, or Almeida, like he did in the game in Karaiskakis, they could easily like find the, the weakness of the team. But at the, at the same point, I think Mitchell can play the individual quality card because yeah, when you have Pep Biel, when you have James, when you have uh, Fortunis. This Fortunis right now and a striker uh, with probably Bakambu because he has confidence right now. I mean, uh, it's the, the individual level can make a difference at any yeah. moment, especially and, in the Greek league. Because, and I think that's what Oli Bakos is riding on now. It's uh, individual yeah. talent. We we've come down with a group of players and. Now the hope is individual talent and strategy can lead us to the title or bring us back to the title or bring us into the cup. But I I think it's so fragile, this mix of players that Michel has brought together. I, when I see them play, I think 
to be honest, every team in Greece this season has deep problems. I think Panathinaikos is not very deep. They're a bit inconsistent. Yeah. They struggle yeah. to get a goal. Ike defensively can be shambles sometimes and they drop points. Pauk, we don't even start. I think every team has its faults. You know, Olympiakos is not alone in that um, in that field. But it seems to me like a balancing act that could crumble, You know, if that makes sense. Um, like if... If Fortunis gets hurt again, if James Rodriguez gets hurt, yeah, then you bring yeah. back in Masuras or Gary Rodriguez, yeah, yeah. who again, Gary Rodriguez gets injured. Masuras hasn't been scoring that many goals recently. And you're totally. back to square one at the rest of the season. So You're totally right. And I think the, the, the crucial point is uh, not putting back Retzos as a defender because as much as I love the, the, the guy, the players, the fact that he's made... Uh, at the club, the Socrates and Doi uh, pair has to play at until the end of the season, yeah. unless someone uh, of them gets injured or suspended. But the only way we can win the title is using these centre back pairs, uh, unless we weak, find man. someone on the market. But I don't. I don't believe on finding. I, I, Retos is too weak and physically, I think, incapable of playing at this point. Um, and on that note, I'm going to bring in someone who's not weak and has strong opinions. I'll bring him in. Jose Holebas may say he's not fit enough, but he's fit enough to be on tonight. <laughs> Costa, welcome. Welcome on. What's up? Hey, so we're talking about <clears throat> kind of this balance of the team right now. We we have the 23 players Um that Michel has picked, but we're really looking at 14 or 15 players. The, the team builds itself right now. And I was just talking to Martial. We're looking at uh, projecting the next few weeks, and it's it's a bit worrying about the balance, if that makes sense, going forward with three tens into derbies, into the playoffs, but also um, playing guys 90 minutes, such as James Rodriguez or Fortunis, who've come back from injuries and had injury or fitness problems. So I think we're really talking about the question is Olympiacos is starting to put on good performances, starting to look good. Um, but is this something that can last? You know, is this sustainable? Is this something that can be played in big games? Is this that uh, I, I guess that's where we are. If you want to talk about that, if you want to talk about something else, go ahead. Yeah, man, I think you're kind of getting to the the the, the topic that's so on, on a lot of our minds, which is the you know, what happens from our midfield and forward because we've started to you know bang in the goals and Socrates has come back into the defence and we've shored things up. You know, the last game was 5-0. Today's a clean sheet again. Um, but it's not like we've faced any serious opponent. So it's good to see that we're scoring up front. And you mentioned Fortunis as well. And you know, I'm I'm the first to say how delighted I am to see him back in, you know looking looking very very fit so yeah good start to 2023 and i take the opportunity to say happy new year to everyone as well um we're back uh sorry we've been we've been mia missing in action we need a break too um so yeah we're back now um hope everyone had a lovely holiday and let's hope for the best for 2023 above all you know everyone like they say in greece it really is the most important thing uh, health, la santé, whatever you call it in your country. Now, I think if you look at the games that we've played since coming back from Spain, so there was the 4-1 spanking of Atromitos and then everybody kind of was on this massive high and thinking, yeah, we're back now. Things are going to start to get back into, you know, a, a good a good way for Olympiagos. And then we got bitch slapped in the face by Bazianina after going 2-0 up at half time and this brings us to the point that you made Labro um, about the midfield and the balance of the team so you've got Imbom Juan and Mvila and you've got a manager that hasn't shown um, some, sometimes he makes some funny decisions when it comes to in-game management so I why don't you bring in someone like Samaseku a little bit earlier into the game to just to just pack out the midfield, hold possession? Like you're 2-0 up in the Yanina game. 
why don't you look to kind of, you know, strengthen the midfield again? You, you can see the team's not playing as well. Take a 10 off, put another midfielder in. So Maseku's got legs and more. Um, and I know this is something we talk about in private a lot. I'm really surprised that he is not being used more. He played for like 10 minutes today and almost scored. And some of the touches he had were, you know, out of, you know, completely out of this world for Greek league standards. And he's only playing like 10 minute cameos. So um, we've got we've got an important game again on Sunday. We play Volos away. That's a very tough fixture for us the last couple of years. So you're right. Like the team isn't tested. We're winning the games that we really struggled to win beginning of the season. You guys mentioned we played the Yoni Gos and Yanin at the beginning of the season. We struggled to beat them. But now we've, you know, we beat Atromitos comfortably. We beat um, Asteras comfortably, who we drew with away. We won comfortably today. Can we do that against Volos without having a heart attack? Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's the big question. And I wonder I, whether, whether we have the balance to do that. I think you're completely right. And when you look at Olympiacos this season and now going into January, there's been all this talk about we need a winger, we need a winger. Daniel Mancini from Ike is the guy, or Ike, Aris is the guy. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the interview Karipidis gave on Betaradas. It was like super good. Um, Marcial, sorry, non-Greek speaker, couldn't watch. But he was like saying he's done. It's difficult for him to come back. Whatever the reason is, he's coming to Olympiacos. But in my opinion, you don't need a winger. Where's Olympiacos strong and where do you have a fucking lot of players in the middle of the pitch, right? You have Kasami, you have Samaseku, you have Envia, you have Imbom, you have Buhalakis if you want. And then you have the amazing tens who they're going with. the Biel, James, Fortunis, Valbuena, when he's back, maybe he gives something. So... When I look at the team and I think, well, if you're going to go into Tumba, you're not going to play with Pep Biel, James Rodriguez, and Costas Fortunis, right? That's what I hope, because I think if you do that, you're in trouble. Um, so why not introduce Samaseku as the guy and you play two of those tens? Let's say you play Fortunis and you play Biel, and then you drop a Samaseku into the midfield and Inbom is one of your more advanced third midfield, if that makes sense. So you offer more cover for the defensive line because I, I think we need to play to the advantages we have this season. And the at least this season, the width, the fullbacks, the wingers have been tragic for Olympiacos. So why don't we build into what we're strong at, which is through the center? Um, yeah. And so I hope that's a system we go. Martins played this system where it was like 4-3-3. Three, three, you know, I think in Marseille, he played something similar to that. But it was there were two more traditional wingers, so maybe you I'm know wrong. What, what we need it it's someone that what that he's able to do uh, what Madi uh, was able to to do in the past, like yeah. being someone that plays as a six, a, an eight, and a ten at the same time. And I don't believe that Samaseku is the same profile because he looks more defensive to me compared to Madi. But it, I, it just it's just amazed me. How how is it possible for a club like Olympiacos to let someone like this on the bench? I mean, Samaseku would play for better clubs than Olympiacos for sure in better leagues. Mm. He came he came very late in Greece, of course, like James or Bakambu. But I mean, sometimes I totally agree with with what you say, Lombro. Like we have to build from what we have on the squad. We we do have quality. We probably need a left back, and the cur the current uh, lineup we saw today. If you change the left back with someone that probably goes uh, forward, like Rodine, yeah. for example, even someone like 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 Maswaku that that knows how to attack, knows to cross, to uh, possess the ball uh, offensively, it it would change everything because uh, and. I, I saw this as well, this Huang comment. I think Huang, this is my problem with the current team as it's set up. I don't think like Guillerme or Madi Kamara, Huang cannot win the ball. Like defensively, I think he's very weak or he's soft. His body's not very strong. And that's why I, I, I want to see like a Samaseku into the midfield to, 
to really win the ball because I know Jan and Via is like, what do they say in Greek? Like Kostis or something, like he's the six, whatever. But he doesn't have the physical ability as he's gotten older, the running or the pace. I think he's quite good, but he's more like a Buhalakis. He plays deeper. He pl- he he distributes the ball. But Olympiakos really misses that guy to win the ball. You know, and, you know we yeah. all know the players that, that can do that in the yeah. squad. We all the, know the, that. It's baby Camara, you know. Of he course. could be the guy. He could be the guy. <laughs> but obviously he's not considered. Maybe he is. But for a game in Tumba, for example, it could it, it could be a risk that uh, Michel could take, but not playing on the on the on the on the on the side because otherwise it's probably it's it will be probably a, a loss for him chuckles but yeah we, we definitely need more speed in those games because with the quality we have up front with that fortunis with rames with Bebil, if you add more speed in the midfield I, I don't see any team being able to stop us to stop that quality because it requires uh, a full defense Uh, goalkeeper included, playing at 100%, not making any mistake, not allow, allowing someone to have a, a shooting position. And it won't happen in Greek League, but it all comes down to the midfield. And th- this is a major point we have to solve, much more than a winger to me, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what, watching the game today, I was already thinking about next season in a sense that Yanim Villa's contract is running out. Uh, Imbom Huang definitely going to be transfer interest in the summer. So, you know, you, you're going to need to buy a six. Well, you, yeah, you need a new midfield in the summer going into European qualification, whether it's Champions League, Europa Conference or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, that just came to mind watching today's game. And again, this is another topic we've discussed privately. You know how much we would like to see a, a faster midfield of, you know, Agibu, uh, Imbom, and, and Samaseku. We never will never get the opportunity to see that though. We will never see it. Like Agibu Kamara is not in the squads. Um, he's probably going to get loaned out. Samaseku is probably not going to be here next season, and. You know, Huang, everyone knows there's going to be a decent bid coming in. Maybe maybe Costalianos knows something more about that. I don't know. <laughs> That's a nice segue to Costa. Costa, how are you doing, man? Hi, guys. Happy New Year. Hronia Pola to everyone. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we've, we've talked about this. I was covering uh, Manchester United versus Bournemouth, so I didn't get the chance to watch the game. So I only watched some highlights right now. Huge win for Olympiacos. Um It, it is a huge win because I gave Olympiacos a rare gift in them losing at Pasianina, a very strong guy that, in our opinion, they are the favorites to win the league. Olympiacos didn't bottle it this time. Uh, they picked up the, the W, and now it's three points away from Ike, still 10 points from Panathinaikos. Now waiting for that Salonica derby, hoping for another gift by Pao Coradis, Doesn't doesn't matter. One of them just doing something for Olympiacos there and maybe moving up to third place. The next game against Volos is extremely important, not just because Olympiacos have to win it uh, to, um, to, to remain on course for a title showdown. It's important because Olympiacos have not been able to win more than two games in a row this season across all competitions. They have not been able to create a streak. The best they've done is two games in a row. I don't remember how many times they did it. It wasn't a lot. Extremely important to win at Volos to finally get a streak going right now. As to your point, Costa, I mean, obviously it's important to look into the future and I hope the club is looking into the future. But when it comes to the team, they need to just concentrate on the present right now because the situation is dire. Olympiacos are uh, being threatened by, with humiliation uh, if, they, if, if they don't stay on top of things. Olympiacos, based on how things are going, I cannot see Panathinaikos remaining undefeated in the playoffs based on the way they play and the, the, the way they get the results. Olympiacos could still be champions technically, but they can also finish fourth. And that would be a disaster for Olympiacos, especially if things get even worse and they finish fifth, which is not exactly something we, we, we can say it's definitely not going to happen. Uh, 
other than that, uh, like I said, I didn't watch the game, but I like the newfound confidence of Kostas Fortunis. It looks like he's bringing in that confidence, he's bringing in a sense of identity, um, a sense of a focal point that was missing at Olympiacos right now. Uh, Ionikos didn't look too good based on the fact that they, I didn't see many chances on the highlights. Huge win for Olympiacos. Next game against Volos, extremely important. If they don't pick up the W, then we're back into a really, really nasty situation. I, I, I'll add on, uh, Corsta, what you said. Oh, there's this comment. I don't speak Spanish, but I guess that's how it was hum as good or bad. I'd say. Yeah, I, I would dare right. say that as well. <laughs> that's where my money is. <laughs> he was all right, but. Uh, I, I I think that's that should be the mantra of the team to not look up at oh is Panathinaikos going to win the league is Ike the team to compete? Um, I didn't realize that stat of two two, two games in a row. Yeah. Um, but this is a chance to build a streak for the back horse. Um, okay. yeah, you know that I think that's that's what we were all looking for and everyone was disappointed in that Yanina game when we dropped points because it was like oh shit we have to go and make this streak. <laughs> And then in that game, you basically destroy all the momentum you had built up. So now we're a bit back on the money. And the, the stadium against Volos, I think, is going to have like 12,000 Olympiacos fans or something like that. Eleven. Crazy. It's like, yeah. so. It's, a, it's the history of Olympiacos Volos as well there. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting game. Um, but that's the thing. The team needs to just look at itself and keep building confidence, I think. If they're going to make a run, though, if I, if, if Olympiacos is going to make a run for the title, I think they need a left back. I think you can't play Oleg Reyevchuk anymore in big games. I think I, I, you can't play Marcelo, obviously, in big games. So it, I don't know where they are on, on that front, but I, I, I think they need a left back if they're going to make a run. Yeah, yeah. but how, how would you take... Uh, Ryabchuk of the team is without someone having come before like it's an endless situation because Oleg can't leave uh, without someone coming at his place but if someone does not come Oleg does not leave I mean it's it's it's, it's basically uh, a, a good summer, summary about Oleg's situation at Olympiakos because it's it was the same in the summer and it was probably the same uh, in the next winter because he's still playing for Olympiacos because there is no one else to play, I guess. It's, it's why you need like a ready solution, I think. Like I, uh, the two names are the guy from Chile. I don't know his name. That was in the media. Suazo. Suazo. Uh, and, but I think you need a ready option probably. Mazuaku mm. knows Michel. Mazuaku knows Olympiacos. What state he is in. I have no idea. He's playing for Besiktas, which mm. usually, like I said, when Conrad <laughs> de la Fuente was linked to Olympiacos and us, you know, players linked to Olympiacos or Besiktas, oh God, you, you, you begin to worry. So I, I think you need a ready solution. Yeah, Mazuaku was also a bench warmer at West Ham and he wasn't exactly, he, he was definitely not consistent so, and not very, very. So I don't know what you do. Uh, maybe there's another name in. In the, the works. Do you guys think Marcelo is finished? So I'm just bringing up this comment, not random at all, because we saw Marcelo that game against Atromitos. Oh. Yeah. Um, we saw in the first half that he was getting run ragged down his side. Then the second half, the whole team kind of shored up a little bit. He scored those two incredible goals. Samaseku was covering him. And there, there has been a discussion that, you know, if you do, I think, Costa, you and I talked about it. If you play Marcelo, you need somebody extra to cover for him. You need a player like Bukalagis in his prime, or Samaseku now, someone with <laughs> legs, just basically to cover the gaps. Yeah. And my view is that I think Mitchell views Marcelo as a player that he can use in home games against oh. teams that park the bus. Uh, I wasn't surprised to see him left out the squad today in a sense that it was an away game on paper, even against the lesser opposition. But but the, the, the discussion has begun like again now. Like is Marcelo is Marcelo finished? Like are we looking to sell him? Um what do you guys think? 
Well, we two start... points. Sorry, yeah, sorry, go. go. Yeah, go with you, Costa. Go ahead. Well, two points on this. Everything you just said about the Atromitos game is true. And let's say Olympiacos, I can Panathinaikos. Let's imagine Olympiacos, I can Pau and Panathinaikos are going to go and win the remaining games before the playoffs. Except Olympiacos beat Ike and Olympiacos beat Panathinaikos. Then that's the same points with Ike, minus seven from Panathinaikos. Olympiacos are going to go for the kill at, uh, on the playoffs. Are you going to have Marcelo in there knowing that they can easily, teams much better than Atromitos are going to target the left flank and they can actually score and they can destroy you down the left flank. Uh, and that's, that's the first point. The second point, Olympiacos are actively looking for a left back. Even media that, well, the media are saying that Olympiacos are looking for a left back. That alone tells the story right there. So I think that's, I, I, I think you covered it well there, Costa. I think that's the kind of games Mitzel wants Marcelo for. I don't think Marcelo is the guy you think about when you're going to play Panathinaikos, when you're going to play Aik, when you're going to play Pauk. Extremely important games where you have to win. There's no other way you have to win. I'm not sure we're going to see Marcelo in there. Is he finished? Well, I don't know, but he's definitely not a focal point at Olympiacos. I I would say because I have strong opinions and everyone knows that about Marcelo. Look, the guy, um, if you're going to play Marcelo, you have to do what I talked about. You have to take out one of the tens and you have to play Samaseku. You have to play whatever because when he's on the pitch, he does not cover the left back position. He's almost like another creative force up there. And he scored those two goals without Romitos. So you can't play him. But I think... When talking about Marcelo, you have to have this conversation. If you're paying three to four million euros for a player and you're say, and we're having a discussion, can you play Marcelo against Ionikos away? Are you finished at that point? It speaks for itself. If, if, if the fans have to have the conversation, can Marcelo play Ionikos away? Like even a 25-year-old, you have to be considered like, with Am I really the player? I, and you're paying, and, and it's not a young player, it's a player you're paying 4 million euros. So I think that says it all. Yeah. The, uh, my main question is like, is Marcelo really important for the squad? I mean, like, does he give uh, advices to other players? Does he bring something like Valbuena is bringing? Because we all know that no one's. No one really complains about Valbuena age uh, or the fact that he stays at the club because everyone knows that he can bring so many things to the players uh, outside the pitch or and even inside the pitch, like as a as a number two coach, maybe sometimes on the bench. But I wonder if Marcelo is able to do that because we barely see, we barely read uh, articles about that. I don't. I, at the end of it, I don't really think that. It will be useful for, for example, someone like Oleg, because when Marcelo came, so many people were saying like, oh, he could help Oleg to improve. He could give him some advice to like learn how to cross, how to dribble, stuff like that. But if you don't know how to control the ball, man, you can't teach that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being mean, but no, but you're right because he's, he's not a teacher. Marcelo is not a teacher, and it does not look like the kind of player that can uh i don't know to, how to say that but uh, bring the group uh to progress and because other players don't need that and so the answer would be like it looks like finished i wouldn't be surprised if he leaves during the winter market because you don't you don't keep marcelo for three or four months to play to play one game out of five or six maybe just a because very quick... as Costa said, in the playoffs, there is no easy games he can play in. So, do, do you think that, do you think like he can play further up? But like, is it worth keeping him to play no. him further up the field? Like, okay, no, I I, think I have not. a com I have a question. Marcelo scrap him being a left back. What if Marcelo played where James Rodriguez played tonight? Well, yeah, he... further up or number ten. Further he up, scored no. two goals, two fantastic goals, two fantastic finishes. Like it's clear he can't play left back. Like, at home versus Levadia Cost, you just say, fuck it, Marcelo's going to be our 10. Like, because that may be the only option here now, right? Like, I know the 10 is ridiculous, right? 
That sounds so <laughs> absurd. I'm just I know it sounds so that, absurd. Uh, I'm just going to say that it is true uh, and confirmed that the word thought the, the the word talks within the club uh, before that game against Atromitos about to set, about letting Marcelo go. So that was true. That's not just rumors or us thinking that it was true. But and thanks, Costa, for like I for kind of putting the showing that it was like a conversation to had. But uh, that's where. <clears throat> But that's what I think, you know, when when he was playing that game versus Atromitos, like he, he could barely run back to the left back position. But when he, he was like in those attacking positions where he was he was almost operating like a left winger or as like a 10. It, it, it was OK because James Rodriguez can't run back. Like if you asked James Rodriguez to play left wing, like he couldn't even like jog back. So it's like Marcelo's the same thing. He's skillful. He has a beautiful left foot. Physically, he's not there. Just throw him at the 10. He knows how to create space. Like, I, I'm I'm just saying, like, if you're going to keep him, and I know it sounds ridiculous, I would give it a try, you know? I, I, you get desperate. You're wasting 4 million euros a year, like, to leave this guy to, yeah. to do nothing. So He has the right to maybe. be as shit as some players have been before in the season. I mean, some of, some of the players of the squad had the chance to play, to play, a lot of games and they didn't show it anything. So like we show how many games we show played without scoring one goal. So maybe Marcelo has the right to play as a starter like twice uh, and but, being exposed before leave the club. But what do you guys know. think about that? Uh, if you say to Marcelo, OK, you're clearly not a left back. We can't trust you in big games, let alone small ones. But you look very, you scored two fantastic goals. You have a f fantastic left foot. You know the game well. We're going to play you in the role of James Rodriguez and give him a rest against, let's see if this is something you can do. And then if he can't do it, okay, you throw your hands up and you say, okay, Marcelo's finished. He can't play for Olympiacos anymore. But you, you need to figure out, because can you imagine Marcelo playing the role of Inbom Huang? I think that would be even more of a disaster, right? And that's what they were considering. Oh, maybe put him further in the middle. But I'm just thinking of solutions here. Do you guys <laughs> think like I'm talking bullshit or like, I don't know. Uh... For, for me, there's no value in playing him further forward in the sense that you've already got three tens there being played. And I think... You know, you've got a six million euro investment in BL. You have to play him. Have to you've, got, you've got Fortunis that's back and he's running riot. And then you've got James Rodriguez, who's, you know, the star of the team. And for me, the added value is against the smaller teams that park the bus, like I mentioned earlier. But is it worth keeping him for those games? I think... I think the major issue with Marcelo is that this is a communications nightmare for the club. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. Otherwise, he'd be gone already. It's like you've got a player that's got how many, like 60 something million followers on Instagram. It just like it, it's a, it would be a fiasco if he left after a few months after joining. It would look very bad on the club. And already the club's gone through, you know, an enormous amount of turmoil on the comms front. So I think that's the real issue there. Um, obviously, that's never going to be talked about anywhere else but on Gate 7 International, where we talk real talk. So make sure you do subscribe if you're watching us for the first time. We're your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. We're close to 2,700 subscribers. Hit that button, support the channel. And, I mean, on this Marcelo discussion... I just put up a poll as well. Does Marcelo still have something to give to Olympiacos? Should he stay? Yes or no? The poll is up on our YouTube channel if you're following from YouTube. Um, so far, 100% of you think that he has still has something to give. Um, just a reminder, he's on a one plus one contract. And um, I, I, th I think the way this pans out is that he stays around until the end till the end of the year and then I think yeah. he goes I think that's the yeah. way it's yeah. that's the but I'm just scenario. trying to think the get the most out of him you know like because obviously when when we watched the game with Atromitos um he was a disaster defending Kasami was a disaster trying to cover for him 
but you think to yourself like, okay, Pep Biel is going to need a rest. Like, of course, Costanda, when we go up and we play big teams like Pep Biel, Fortunis, and James Rodriguez are shoe in probably. But when you're playing Asteras Tripoli at home on a Wednesday night, playing Marcelo at that left central attacking mid position or the center one instead of of um, James, to see if it works even, you know, just like see if it works. And if it doesn't, there you go. You say, we tried it. But this, it this thing of the left back, this thing of trying to force him to be a left back is hurting the team because now we don't have a reserve left back either, you know, because we're going to get rid of Leidner to go on loan in this window. And we're g- what happens if... Worst case scenario, Oleg. This is this sounds ridiculous because I was just criticizing. Oleg goes down. Like, what do you do? You play on the roots or set left and back. You play. Yeah. It's a disaster. So, so you don't even count on Marcelo as a left back. So it's just, I, I'm just trying to find a solution here because I don't want the club to waste three to four million euros this season on a player. They probably made it back in jersey sales. I hope, fingers crossed that, but. So J- Josh Bowler's going, yeah. So we've He's gone. We yeah. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Josh Bowler's going back to Blackpool via Forest, and then yeah. you've noticed over the last few games, Gary Rodriguez is one of the first subs that Mitchell brings on. So he he talks about needing sixteen players. Gary Rodriguez is one of his sixteen players. Indeed, he's shown it the last you know since we since we got back from Spain. He came on today again. You know what you know what you're going to get from Gary Rodriguez, but. Yeah, you're not going to rely on him. So you do have a point. Like Marcelo could be just a squad option, like for whatever until the end of the season. That just again, like my my fixation with him playing at left back is is kind of twofold. Like one, I think that Oleg brings next to nothing to the team, like in terms of attack. Like I, I I've seen he's accredited in assist today, but. It's just the mentality, like of 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 the fullback. Like Marcelo gets the ball, the ball's going forward. It's going to be something positive. And when you're playing in the Greek league, you want your your fullbacks to be positive. Every time Oleg gets the ball, he he controls it, and then he looks back. He plays a parallel pass or plays it back, and then makes a run forward. And you're just like, you know, that's why. That's why I'm a bit fixated with Marcelo at left back, mm. because then if you put him forward, you lose something in attack. So you're taking an attacking-minded left back off, and you're putting a defensive-minded player on, and you lose something in terms of the, the things that he brings in the build-up. Because you can criticise his fitness. Uh, yeah, he doesn't look like a professional footballer anymore, but he has those traits. He has that ability to play the ball forward and you know hit the ball the way he did against Atromitos and score two goals, you know, from nothing. So. Yeah, I think we've we've milked the cow enough on. Um... It's just interesting subject because I, I think it, it, it's a difficult one because you don't know what to do. Like there's so many ways to go about it because we saw in that Arthromitos game, Jesus Christ, in that first half, like the X goal must be like 20 down his his side. But then you think about when he played for Real Madrid, like the guy wasn't like a defensive monster, right? He he would run forward. So how the fuck did they? Un- Obviously, he was in better shape, but how did they do it? You know, how did they unlock it to make sure that his defensive fragilities were more covered? I don't, I, I don't I, know. I, I think that was as simple as just a, you know, coach's instruction. I mean, just like attack down the side. He can't get back. Like we we all see it. Yeah, from the, from the TV, you don't need to be in the stadium to see the guy. The guy's heavy, like he can't track back. He's this is the difference between speed and acceleration. Because his acceleration is good. It is. Yeah. Like the, the goal he scored with his right foot, he has to beat the defender to get onto the right foot and rocket it into the top corner. But top speed, you're not getting back over a long distance, like to track back when you lose the ball in transition. So um this is a nice point from from John Sabukas. You're talking about Kitsos. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Kitsos. He's had a great season. Kitsos actually gave an interview to um, Omonia's channel today. Um, a friend of ours, Stel, um, from the Omonia podcast, No Choftes, uh, sent me a link earlier. They really like him over there. Like he's done, like he's done a good job. Like he's more and more got become a a mainstay in the team. You know, I mean, judging from the fact that Oleg is 
either going now or going in the summer. Leiden is going on loan. We don't know if he's ever going to play. Marcelo, like, you know, Gitos is coming back in the summer. So that may be something to look forward to and hopefully something the club has in their minds in, you know, planning for for this summer. What about and, the other side of the um of the yeah, so, uh, Olympiacos you know, Olympiacos haven't had decent fullbacks since 2020. And now here's one. How did he do in his on his debut? Rodine, right back. Labra, what did you think of Rodine? Positive. I was positive. And you keep writing that I was shitting on him or making fun of him. I was just making fun of the whole Rafinha thing, how it was the same thing. Flamengo, right back, free transfer. And his agent is literally Rafinha, who's still playing. Uh, so I had no opinion of, like, how can you have an opinion of the random right back from Flamengo? I had no opinion. But what I will say is when Costa mentioned... When you see a fullback play, you see that like attacking attempt or the defensive one. And it seemed like Rodney had something going forward. He, he seemed quick. He seemed pacey. He had a good dribble. These are all first impressions in like three weeks. I'm going to be like, Rodney, shit, what did they bring us? But the, the first opinion was, he seems decent, but like I never want to raise my hopes with the fullbacks. It's been like, of course, I said we're at 2023. It's been four years. Jesus Christ, it's been four years of saying this. So I don't want to say Rodney's like the next coming of Jesus Christ yet, but <laughs> it, he he seemed decent. Like I've been watching the nice sound of the resource and freaking Versailles play right back for two months now. And before that, Kenny Lala, the, Rafinha. Oh my God, the list is so long and horrific. Anyway, I'm, I'm, long. I, I'm just... <sighs> Drager. I, Drager, Drager. Yeah, Drager. Who was even playing right back for us earlier this season? I don't even remember. Avila. Avia. Fuck. I, I forgot Avila about him already. He's that. He was that bad. Or he, okay, he wasn't that bad. He was, he was all right. But you, you know what I mean? So it's just hopefully Rodney can be solid. He's played at a huge club in Brazil with huge expectations. Um, he looks decent. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Like Rodney is the guy to play right back for us, you know? I don't want to criticize the guy or say anything, but he seemed decent. Let's let's hope it continues. What do you think, Martial? We haven't heard we haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, yeah come on. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with uh, Lambros because the the first the first touch touch of the ball from Rodney like indicates that he is not afraid to play offensive. He has a good control. His cross were kind of good. Uh, I think it's because Bakambu is not the kind of striker that really knows how to score uh, with a cross, like with the header. Uh, that's another point that probably costed us many points this season because uh, Tiquinho, for example, would have been the kind of striker that yeah. uh, we would need in uh, tricky games. Uh, but it, it could apply to Hassan too because... Uh, those are I don't know the word in English the, um, they knows how to operate inside the box inside the area the scrappy the scrappy player you know the... especially Tiquinho because I remember uh, the first game I think it was the game in Haifa he played like literally alone yeah. uh, in the middle of the defense and he was roasting the defense all by himself and Coming back to Rodine, it frustrates me because it's kind of uh, obvious that we won't see what uh, uh, Rodine, what, what is Rodine able to, to offer to Olympiacos because both Bakambu and Al Arabi doesn't have the, the characteristic of a strikers that can take advantage of those cross and and even for Oleg, because the, the, the few good cross Oleg did was the one, for example, for Tiquinho against Fenerbahce. And I don't know, it's... Those two topics are linked for me because I kind of enjoy what I saw from Rodney today, but I have to see him play with a, with a different striker to be, to be sure that he could be a very, very good striker, a very good um, right-back for Olympiacos. A part of that, 
it was a, a good debut in a, against a very weak team. So big test will be in Volos, even in even if the last game in Volos were two very big victory from Palacios and Ike, if I'm correct. So yeah. yeah, let's see. What do you think, but, Costa? Oh, sorry, Martial. No, no, but but another point that is important to me. I think Costa's kind of said it, but. I'm kind of worried about Mitchell not involving enough players uh, in the mission he ha we have to do, like coming back uh, to the top, because you can't you can't do it with 13 or 14 players. Players like like, like Samaseku, they need to be more involved. But it, it could apply, it, for example, for uh, Gary Rodriguez, for example, if he, if he's not playing that much with those three tens as a starter, like. The, the the quality of Mitchell being a good manager have to sh to be shown right now because we all know that uh, the main critics towards Mitchell was were not giving enough uh, attention to the players that do not do not play for Olympiacos and it will f it will be he will face that in the future and, and I'm kind of worried about that but we will have time to speak about it I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. No, I, uh, from a few things you mentioned, I want to say um, after the game in Bratislava, I couldn't forgive Tequino to ever play for Olympiakos again. Like his behavior in Bratislava was terrible. But that you mentioned it, I remember two games of Tequino, which are odd. The two games versus Atalanta, I think I'll remember for Tequino. He was really good in both. The game at home, specifically, he was like completely by himself trying to, to win the ball. He was holding the ball up and there was no one there. I remember Henry Onyekura was running around like a chicken with no head, you know. Um, but, but what you say is interesting because El Arabi, um, he looks fitter, he looks better, but he just looks off it, you know, like he's not that player. You can't count on him. And when he's not a killer in the box and he's not scoring those chances, what does he bring? Um, and that's what I'm worried about. And, and Bakambu, the, the media was saying that he may leave in January, but now he scored a goal and has performed pretty well. Like things have changed. I was seeing reports that like, maybe he would want to go, blah, blah, blah. So uh, it, it's a bit of a juggling act. So does Olympiacos go for a striker now? We Joe is in the team. He was in the mission, I think. Right. So. Who knows about that? Um, let's see. Let's see. I, I, there's so many problems bubbling at the surface, you know, where the team could blow up again, you know, like we're finally happy. There's some stability. We're playing good. We're winning. But it's like the problems from two months ago are not completely gone. It hasn't been a full summer break where everyone left, you know, so. If, it got, if I can just finish on this topic, I think what we need is – allowing players to have a second season at Olympiacos uh, because for, for some of them, it, it, it took them many months to get in shape. Tiquinho, for example, he came uh, from China after months without, without uh, any minutes of football. And same for Ronnie Lopez, for example. But he plays in League One right now. And I hope I, I don't see Rodine being that kind of player, but we we need to allow players to have another season to prove to 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 get better to improve, and I hope we will progress on that. And because sometimes t things can be unlocked in the second season because with a change of coach, with a change of system, with a change of players, and change really of three hope... coaches sometimes. Yeah, exactly. How many talent we have wasted? I mean, Lombros, you all know how many talent we have wasted in the in the past years and Olympiacos. Even on Yekuru, I mean, like we had so many, so many. We we all hated what he what he did last season, but without any winger on the squad, sometimes you have to use what we what you have, especially if you don't if you don't don't if you don't know how to make good transfers. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for you guys about today's game. Um, 
What did you think about Fadiga and Lovera today? Those are Olympiacos players, relatively young. I mean, those guys are going to be back in the squad for preseason, maybe come the summer. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. I, I like Bandugu Fadiga. I like the fact that he played centre mid today. I think I've I've noticed at Ionikos even he's been deployed on the left mainly. I think it's one of the first times he's played in the middle today, and I thought he had a really good a really good game. A couple of misplaced passes, but still like that ability to move and change direction very quickly in the midfield. It was very very apparent. Just like the the ability to just breeze past some of our players in the midfield. He made it look really easy at times. Just picking up the ball and quick kind of, you know, body faint to the left and then he's gone the other way and, you know, he's gone. And um, the, the, the one criticism I have about him is always the same. Like, eat some food. Like, or just like, go to the gym. Do something because you're so skinny, man. Like, that boy is so skinny. Like, Labro, like I don't know the name of the Suvlaki place that you guys went to in the summer. Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. You guys need to take Bandugu Fadiga to a Suvlaki yeah. place, man. Elvis uh, that's in it. the main square of Pagrati. It's the best. Yeah. That's the one you were telling me about. I never went there. Man, it's oh, amazing. I never went there. Go, you got to go to Elvis, man. It's really good. I, my opinion. Seriously, like, uh, Fadiga, I want to like seriously. I think I think he's got potential. I think he can do something. Um, Lovera, nah, not didn't Lovera do... won't make it because at he his won't position, Olympiacos will always bring players like Pep Bill or Rames. Or I mean, this is not the kind of player we are good to to promote. Yeah. But Fadiga, he has, he has. I don't know. He has the. He plays with the the chin up. Like I don't know how to say that, yeah. but you can yeah, yeah, yeah. see that yeah. is sure of his qualities and he's not afraid even uh, if he's very skinny he has the football in him i don't know to say that yeah, yeah. you could that, see he's from one of the best academies in the world and he knows what he's doing you know same applies from same applies for double because those are the players that they are willing to take risks they bring something different in the midfield like both of them they won't be able to play at the same time but those are profiles I would like to see in the future, and especially in the in the summer preparation because the friendlies probably next summer will be more interesting. Yeah, you say Imbam Huang is gone. Those are the two candidates I think replace him. If you look in the squad, who are going to be here if he leaves in the summer? Fadiga and Dabo compete for the job there. You think Olympiacos is, is willing Surlis to do as that? well? Surlis, I guess he's not had the best of time. But Fadiga is no winger because he Fadiga plays. Fadiga is Hagibu. no winger, man. That guy, fucking Martinez, it, man. It's I like, swear to God. It's like Hagibu. It's like Hagibu. I mean. Yes. They say he's like fast and skinny, and they're like, oh, he's a winger. Throw him out there. It's like, no, because you're you know, lucky you didn't play him at wing back. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> he could learn from Bruno, get him on the phone. Bruno's like, oh, yeah, left back at Olympiacos. I've done it. Yeah. But no, I, Lovera is done at Olympiacos. I'm going to come out and say, like, there's nothing there for Olympiacos as a player. Um, it's not made for Olympia. I mean, it, it does not score that much. You know he has something when, when, when you see him play because I kind of watched a lot of Ionicos games. And the issue, the first issue is that Ionicos does not have a good striker. So it's very, it's very hard for yeah. uh, Lovera to assist. Uh, and the same, and, the, and but when he was in Omonia, it was good, but it was not that good. And when he came back to Argentina, it was the same. Like he has some good uh, phases, but it's not consistent enough. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I think yeah. Also, should we talk about Vachlik, like signing for Alkmaar and then failing the medical, and then is that buddies, even true? Like, and then his buddy was like, "Oh, he has a contract already." Is that even he retweeted true? Retweeted like... something. He retweeted something. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's it is his official Twitter yeah. account because it yeah. has a lot of uh, 
a lot of uh, followers, but he's not verified. Yeah, I, I think that the message of the retreat was to say oh, he's coming back to training with Olympiacos. The club gave the green light to find a play a club elsewhere, but at the same time, if he he doesn't leave, like it's okay to stay, he will come back with the group and stuff like that. So. I yeah. think he's still recovering. That's the main uh, message we have to to get through that. Yeah. I think he's not going to he's not going to be in the mission until until months. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. Uh, the thing about having a goalkeeper is that only one player can play there. I'm very happy with Alexandros Paschalikis. Uh, thing is, Olympiacos are in a very crucial point this season. Like I said, yes, technically they could still win the league. But they can also get absolutely humiliated if you think that there's playoffs coming up. Uh, Paschalakis can still get injured, is the reality. And when he was at Pauk, Paschalakis was quite inconsistent. For a while, he was playing second fiddle to Zivko Zivkovic, who was a complete donkey. Uh, at the end of this, like, I'm okay with, go uh, with having Paschalakis going forward. But if that... When Vatsli got injured, when he injured his shoulder, they said he's going to be out for three months. Those three months are almost up. I'm not sure what he, how he is, uh, how his fitness is right now. I don't know how fit he is. Uh, but if he does regain full fitness, Vatsli would be an excellent option, at least as a contingency plan and goal. Because if Paschalakis gets injured, if he goes back to his Pauk days, Zolakis is not ready for a, for a mission like that, for a challenge like that. At this point, where it's like live or die, do or die, Vatslik would be an amazing extra uh, extra solution and ex an amazing contingency plan. If Olympiacos get rid of him, he's going to leave for nothing, just like he's going to leave for nothing in the summer. It's not the time right now to get rid of Vatslik. I feel like you need all hands on deck, especially on the goalkeeper's position. Olympiacos, if if Olympiacos need new players, it's a left back and a winger. If you bring in a goalkeeper, that's even more on the list. That's even more stress even more things to do in the transfer window in which it, it, that exists only to make tweaks, not to recreate a team. Mm -hmm. It's there to make tweaks. If Olympiacos can keep, can, can keep Vatslik and Vatslik will regain fitness in the near future, absolutely keep him in the team. Do not get rid of him before the summer. Yeah, I, I'm either way. Pascal Alexis is your goalkeeper till the end of the season, I think. What if he story. gets injured? What if he then you roll with Solakis and the season's is, is already? He ready? Yeah. Is he ready? Can he handle that kind of pressure? Probably, in my opinion, no. But so, okay, no, so, yeah. But my my opinion is this is a hot take because this is the number one signing for Olympiacos, the winger, the winger. You don't buy a winger in January, and you roll with what you're strong with, and that is this three ten, whatever the hell we want to call it. And I do think that what you have gets you to the end of the season. I really think it would be a mistake to bring in some fucking random winger from wherever yeah. they find him, you know? So. I, I think the, the only good market to explore in January when you're Olympiacos would be the, the MLS or the Brazilian market because they ending their season compared to someone that is a failure. Uh, yeah in yeah. France or in Spain or in Germany or elsewhere because it would, it would be like four months of failure in the club and trying to relaunch in Olympiacos, but we don't have time for that. Yeah. Compared no, to Rodinay, for example. I think the club needs ready solutions to make one last push for the title and, and then in the summer you rebuild it. I would do the pre-contracts now. You try to look for those six-month contracts if you can for good wingers, strikers, whatever, but right now you want a ready solution you know, I, I would get another 10. Like you, you're I, going through this road of 10s. I sent get you a list that has to be published about the, yes, the best prospect in France. Like, but it, it, it needs someone doing his, his job. And like, on that note, also, I got to head out. M, Francois M left, left the club. And yeah, on that note, on I that. need to head out. And I will say my man on match the game was Costas Fortunis. And my rating for Michel was a B. Plus. Mm -hmm. B, because Samasek would need to come on earlier. On that note, guys, I'll wish you good night. Good to be back. Um, long live Gate 7 International. Excited for more episodes in the new year. And more graphics coming from me.
Thanks, a lot, bro. Yeah. Take care, okay. Bro. Talk to you guys later. Bye, bye. Ciao. Yeah. On that note, guys, we can we can start to wrap up as well. Um, yeah. We normally end these kind of post match episodes with a man of the match and coaches' grades. For those fans that are following live, or if you're watching this afterwards, you can vote your man of the match in the chat live right now, or you can leave a comment at the end. Don't forget to leave us a like as well, guys. It really helps getting the channel promoted out on YouTube and finding more Olympiacos fans around the world. I'll go first, man of the match for today's game. Um, surprise, surprise. Costas Fortunis for me, even if he only played 60 minutes. Second half, I have to say, like it was really shit to watch. Um, but the job was done in the first half and then I think um, just his individual class does it for me so he's my man of the match coach's grades uh, B for me uh, again I would have liked to see some changes in the second half to try and um, beef up the midfield and make sure we hang on to possession a bit more so that's me for a man of the match coach's grade what about you Marshall? Well, I, w I won't change anything you said because I think it was the easiest game we will have to play this season against a team that b basically said, okay, we, don't, we, we, we won't go after the win because they put Mashash as a striker, as a face nine, and it says it also. It was a game in which Michel should have made changes way before. Like Samaseku at before the the one hour the one hour stamp, so it will be Fortunis Fortunis uh, uh, MVP of the game and a B for Michel. Costa, I know you didn't watch the le the game live, but do you want to weigh in? No, no, I didn't watch the game, so I think it'd be very unfair if I if I if I weighed in. But I do want just very quickly. Nobody wants to burn. Uh, Burn Costas Zolakis. We've said many times in this show that he's an amazing goalkeeper. Br brings back shades of Dimitris Eleftheropoulos. Yes, he's not ready, though, for that kind of challenge. Olympiacos are going to play two matches against Panathinaikos, two matches against Taik, two matches against Pauk. Must win games. Zolakis is not ready for that kind of challenge. It's that simple. And if Pasalakis gets injured, that could uh, spell disaster. Kanenan den keme, John Sabuka. Opote irema. So, yeah. That's all I have to say. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens next week at Volos. I feel like I want to keep asking this question at the end of every episode that we do until the end of the season. Do you want to guess what question it is? <laughs> can we win the title? Exactly. <laughs> Marshall, can we win the title? Fans, fans watching live, yes, no, in the chat now. Can we when win? I see, uh, I'm just going to finish on that uh, because uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Fortunis as a, as a whole, but Fortunis on the Greek league, when it is when he's like that, is uh, someone that wins you a title because he's very consistent with goals and and assist in the Super League. And this is exactly what we needed at that time. And this is, uh, for example, Panathinaikos and Ajax, they don't have that kind of player. So I would say it is kind of my hope for the title. He has so many, so many things to prove to everyone, to himself maybe at, at first, and to the club, to Martins, to every, to, I don't know, to the fans that doubt about him. So I kind of rely on him on that. If someone can do it, 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 it has to be him. I know it's too much pressure on him, but it could be the guy that leads us to the team, to the title. So is that yes or no? Yes. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Marshall says yes now. Let's see, let's see if you say the same thing on Sunday after the <laughs> Bolas game. Costa, what do you think? Olympiacos can finish second, especially after today's result from Mike and Olympiacos. If they, if Olympiacos don't beat Volos next week, I don't believe anything. If I don't see at least a, a, a three-game winning streak, I don't believe anything. Very yes. pragmatic way of approaching that one, Costa. And you can see the the table there. Um, Banathan Lagos still top 42 points. Ayak on 35 after losing today against... 
Baz Yanina. They slipped up away from home. I mean, we're seeing Banathanagos and Ajax slip up in the last two in the last two rounds. So Banathanagos dropped points in the last game. Ajax dropped points today. We're on a two-match winning streak. Like you said, Gosta, we still haven't made it three wins on the trot this season. Yet we face Volos on Sunday away from home. They're fifth in the table, three points behind Balk, who are three points behind us with a match in hand. Absolutely massive game on Sunday. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna answer my own question as well. I still believe that we can we can win the league, but I the, the reason I kind of want to keep asking that question is the answer to that question seems to change um as quickly as a uh, as Greek temperament does. But anyway, here we are. I think that's um that brings us to the end of the show for for today. Great to be back on Gate 7 International. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, Costa, for joining. We'll and be- I can't praise I can't praise Fortunis because <laughs> it does not happen that often, but as long as we only play in Super League, I'm really happy to have him back. Because first of all, we have to be happy when someone is back from an injury like that, both physically and mentally. Marshall had some nice words for Fortunis there. Yeah. Not to be taken lightly. He's gonna write something, he's gonna write something more critical on Twitter later, though, as soon as he's off the pod. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks, Thank everyone, you. for watching, for joining us tonight. Gate 7 International, we're back. Your number one English source for all things Olympiagos. Don't forget, before you go, hit the like button. If you're joining us for the first time, you can go back and watch the episode again. Subscribe. Make sure you don't miss the next episode. We'll be back on Sunday after the Volos game, hopefully with our third victory in a row. We're Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. We'll see you next time. Gatti Magica! Oh, fuba!